Hello, so in this video we will talk about uh, the relationship between uh, Turing machine and recognizing a regular set. Okay, so by definition what does it mean for a Turing machine to, a reg uh, to recognize a regular set? So we say that a string S X is said to be recognized by a Turing machine T and T is given by what? Set of states, input, you know, input set, transition function, which is a partial function by the way and a initial state initial, initial state if and only if writing x on the tape moves t from an initial state to a final state and then it make makes it to halt and t is recognized is said to recognize a set a if it recognizes x if and only if x belongs to a okay so this means that if a language all the set of uh, you know uh, strings uh, are in a language and then we say that all set of strings are you know making t halt and none of other strings are making it halt then we say that a turing machine is recognizing that set okay so now for regular sets we have something which um, which makes it easy to design a turing machine for that because we say that we know that by clean theorem a set is regular if and only if it is can be represented by a finer state automata right so what do we do for a given regular set we find the finite state automaton for that set and then using the transition function we can devise a turing machine accordingly but what is the way to do it the way to do it is like this so for finite state automaton what kind of transitions do we typically have we can have this kind of transition s a to s b right and some input let's say uh, p in that case this translates to the five tuple of s a p s b p and moving towards the right okay now this p is arbitrary you can choose some other uh, uh, you know some other uh, symbol here as well as long as it belongs to our input symbol okay okay now if we have s0 as a starting state in a f finite state automaton this translates to just a statement that s0 is the initial state it's simple enough okay what if we have this story s let's say f so this corresponds to what uh, we can say we can say s f is not a starting state for any five to so why do I say five tuple? Because recall that a Turing machine is completely set specified by a finite set of five tuples, in which we say that this is the five tuple current. Uh, typical five tuple looks like this: we have a current state, we have an input symbol, then we have a new state, and then we have an uh, whatever the, the this is the cell. Uh, we can we actually we have to, we should say cell uh, state. And then we say cell state new and then direction so this is the five, typical five tuple right so I, any Turing machine can be represented by a finite uh, set of these tuples here so then this guy again if we have a finite state automaton in which SF is a final state or accepting state then we can say in the language of Turing machine that SF is not a starting state for any five tuple so SF does not qualify here but this has a slight complication here what if we have now we know that in finite state automaton we can have a situation like this sf and this sum p this can take us to maybe sc this is possible right so what do we do we translate this story into this we say sf is not a final state anymore and then we say if we get an empty string then we have 
sum s f dash okay so this and this is it's easy to say they are equivalent because this is uh, going here uh, if an empty string comes okay yes so then it's easy to translate we can say s f p s c p r and what is this lambda translate into Turing machine the blank symbol so we say s f b s f dash and we can say p b for this story for this condition for this uh, problem this doesn't this does not matter the cell state new cell state does not matter okay so this is how we translate it okay now let's go and you know uh, see whether how can we translate this into an example here? Okay. So now we say example. So now what, what what our job is? Our job is to find a language, to find a Turing machine for a language that has one in its second symbol place or symbol or one as its second symbol okay okay so now let's first of all let's devise a final state automaton for this so one as its second symbol correct so then we can say okay this is my s0 okay so if i get a zero i get go to s1 and if I get a 1 then also I get a s1 why because we are more interested in second symbol so for first symbol whatever happens I am going to a, a state which you know which is s1 okay now for so this is one here if second symbol is 1 then I can terminate okay and then after this I don't care what comes but if second symbol is 0 then I go to a non final state and then I don't care what else comes correct so now it's easy to see that this finite state automaton is representing a language for which one is the second symbol always but then we have a transition from a final state to itself so then we have to translate this guy so then let's uh, erase this part so this part now looks like this we have s2 and then we have a 0 1 here and then we have a lambda here and we have s4 here correct So now we have all the ingredients to make our Turing machine. So let's start with. So first transition S0 to S1. So we say S0, 0, S1, 0, R. Second transition S0 to S1. So S0, 1, S1, 1, R. For simplicity, we keep the uh, uh, you know cell state same. Then we have S1 to S2. So S1, S1, uh, S2, 1, R. And then we have S1 to S3, so which is S1, 0, S3, 0, R. And then we have S3 to S3, both of them. So I can say S3, 0, S3, 0, R. S3, 1, s3 1 r and then we have s2 to s2 so i can uh, i can come here so s2 0 s2 0 r s2 1 s2 1 r and then we have s2 to s4 which is s2 b s4 like I can say 0 R okay 
So these are the tuples which represent a Turing machine which can accept the language for which one is the second symbol. Okay. So now let's see if we have zero, then we go to S1. Then for S1, if we get one, then we get to S2 and S2 is the only state which can lead to S4. And we can only reach S2 if the second symbol is one. Okay. So this is our required Turing machine. Okay. Let's do another example. So now my, my second example is language which has even number of ones. Okay. So now let's again find the um, find the finite state automaton for that. So for example we have S0. Okay. Now we want a state which counts whenever we have odd number of ones here. And then we can make this guy a final state and say one here and then a zero here and then a zero here. What is the problem with this? The problem with this is that it also recognizes the empty string here. Okay. So then the better way is to just keep it like this. So then this, the better way is we put it S0, then we say S1 at 1 and then 0 here, 0 here and then at another one we get to S2 and we could put a one here and we put a zero. Okay, now in order to make our Turing machine, what do we do? We can modify this part. We can modify this part as we already know how to do that. We can make this one S2. Okay. And put a zero here. And then at lambda, we can say this is S3. Okay. Now you can appreciate that we have a 0, 1, 1 and then lambda. So which means an even number of ones. Whenever we have odd number of ones, we have 1, 1 and 1. We will be at a state in which another one comes and then only we can move to our final state. Okay. So now it's straightforward. So we start with S0, 0, 0 uh, S0, 0, 0 right so we always move to the right here and then s0 1 s1 1 r and then we have s1 0 s1 0 r which is this guy then we have s1 1 s2 1 r then we have s2 0 s2 0 R and then we have S2 1 S1 1 R and then in the end we have S2 B S3 uh, 0 1 B R okay now note that S3 is the only state here on which the Turing machine holds and S3 we can only reach if, if we are at S2 and as we are only at S2 in if we have even number of ones. Okay. Okay. So now it depends on, I mean, you can make an uh, Turing machine for this part as well. If you allow zero number of ones. Okay. So if you think that zero is an even number, then you can use this and it will be obviously simpler than this one. And if you think that zero is not an even number, only you have to have a, at least two uh, ones for a language to be acceptable then you use this guy. Okay. So in this video, as a summary, we said that uh, how can we uh, design a Turing machine which recognizes a regular set and we use the Klein's theorem uh, in which we say that we said that a set is always, uh, a set is regular if and only if it can be represented by a finite state automaton. 
and then we've made a translation between a finite state automaton and a Turing machine okay and Turing machine always moves to the right and it always follows the transition function of that finite state automaton okay so this is it for this video hope you hope it was easy to understand thanks for watching and hope you like the video